Hey gang, John Cantera here. I am the Double Broker Bounty Hunter and I am coming to you today to talk more about the RMIS Truck Stop new authentication process that was launched uh, here this month in uh, January 2024. Uh, this is uh, kind of a new thing and probably something that uh, dispatchers, if you haven't encountered this yet, um, you will very soon. So please uh, take heed. And I've got a couple of tips in here as to how to get through it as quickly as possible. Because let's face it, this is a pain in the tail. Uh, first time you do it, you need to make sure that the carrier owner uh, is available and has their phone handy. That will make this process go a lot smoother. Uh, and then moving forward, instead of the one verification code, that your owner typically gets via email when you do an RMIS setup. He's now going to get an authentication code on his phone as well as then getting the uh, code, the verification code uh, for RMIS uh, shortly after. So fun times, but it's all about fraud prevention and keeping scammers from uh, getting hold of carrier and broker information or posing as carriers or brokers on truck stop uh, in, to you know, post loads for double brokering or whatever. Uh, so this is actually a step in the right direction. It's just another step that uh, we have to go through as dispatchers trying to get things squared away. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get into this as quickly as we can. Uh, the MFA is a pilot program that started uh, in November uh, with a limited rollout to a few brokers. So I actually did see this uh, the first day that it was rolled out uh, for the first time. Uh, only one of my seven carriers uh, ended up taking part in the pilot program. Uh, so at least I had somewhat of a heads up as to how it was going to uh, flow out. And it is live as of this time. Uh, so uh, MFA is multi-factor authentication, and, and we're seeing this in a lot of places. Uh, Facebook's doing it. Uh, StreamYard, uh, the service I use for do my streaming, uh, is doing it. Um, there's a lot of uh, a lot of different types of social media and other outlets that are using MFAs to prevent scammers from coming in and trying to steal people's accounts. It's actually a good thing, but it does take a couple more steps to log in. Uh, there are three different types of options uh, when you're doing the MFA. There's the biometrics, there's uh, text or SMS, and an authenticator app. And I know uh, Microsoft has an authenticator app that's usually fairly good. Uh, but for myself, in running through this process, the SMS is usually the easiest uh, and the fastest way to get through it. Uh, but that's... Again, just my own opinion. Take that for what it's worth. Um, so let me go ahead and blow up the screen so you all can see uh, what the screenshots look like. Uh, these are the three different methods as you come up uh, through this. And you can get this uh, guide uh, from uh, Truck Stops MFA uh, information. They, they have it uh, out there public for everybody. But this is kind of helps to consolidate everything and kind of show you what you're going to be seeing, how you're going to be seeing, and how to work with it, because um, all their stuff is, is nothing but screenshots and brief descriptions. So let me go ahead and uh, keep going through this. Uh, the authenticator app is, uh, or sorry, the biometrics are, are typically done uh, depending on uh, what platform your uh, your phone is set to, uh, whether it's Apple, Windows, whatever. Um, and then uh, once you uh, start getting into that, you'll have a QR code that pops up. Uh, that QR code uh, then generates a unique pass key. Once you save the pass key, it will fully register uh, at your device. Uh, after that, okay, now you've got your biometrics every time you do an RMIS setup in order to give you uh, the access codes. Again, to me, that's a little on the complicated side, but that's just me. The text is very simple. Uh, when you are working on setting up your MFA, uh, you're going to uh, get a verification code. You then register the phone number. 
uh, once you register the phone number, it send, uh, it'll then go ahead and uh, mark you as being authenticated. Uh, that little blue check mark on the phone usually means you've been successful. Uh, if you're using an authentication app, QR code, it gives you a, a set of codes uh, for pairing, and then you go ahead and you put in that authentication code, and again, you get your wonderful check mark. This is a one-time requirement to verify your identification, and this is what actually sets the MFA up in its entirety. So after you've selected what type of MFA you're using, then you're going to go through the identity verification piece. The identity verification piece requires access to a phone, a computer, and a driver's license for the owner. Uh, I highly recommend you do this for the owner or for the ops manager or whoever is the responsible person uh, for the carrier's MC. That way, oh, excuse me, that way you make sure that you have the right uh, information and you, that individual is not going to change often. If you have a change in the individual that provides the authentication, you will have to run this process again. So uh, if you have a dispatcher, your dispatcher can be sitting on the computer doing the computer piece while the owner is dealing with his phone and the ID verification. So uh, again, the owner needs to be the one that has the phone because part of this process, owners, you got to do a selfie, smile. Okay. So uh, moving on to how that process looks, uh, the truck stop will then ask you to verify your ID. Uh, so you click on secure my account. It gives you a brief description of how the setup goes. You submit the ID, you take a selfie. Uh, the AI then does an identity verification and then it uh, accepts you and logs you in. So you go ahead and, and hit continue. Again, I use the SMS uh, version. So then uh, I plug in from my computer the owner's SMS uh, in, or their owner's phone number. They're going to get this link that you see on the right hand side to be able to start the process on their phone. Now, this is what you basically see on uh, the computer at, uh, at, at to start off with. Uh, excuse me, this is what you see on your phone when you're doing this. And actually, you'll see the QR code pop up on the screen dispatchers. You're going to see a verification code underneath the QR code. You see the six-digit code there, that 99280. Uh, that code should match what your owner has on their phone. So be on the phone with them while they're doing this step uh, so that you can verify that verification code. Once the verification code is completed, you move on to the next screen. This is what the owner will see as he's moving through. He's going to start the uh, verification process. They're going to put in the phone number. They're going to be sent a code to do the verification. Then they're going to uh, take a scan of their driver's license. Once they do the scan of their driver's license, then they're going to be asked to take a selfie. And what the AI is going to do is it's going to compare the selfie to the driver's license for the match. Once it matches, then you get uh, a, the screen with a red check mark for the owner on their phone. And at the same time, dispatchers, your screen will change from the QR code with the six digit verification code to the uh, truck stop uh, blue, check with, uh, uh, blue check mark phone that you see in the middle. Uh, once you see that, then we know the verification was completed. If it fails, you're going to see the last screen pop up, ID verification not completed, in which case you need to go ahead and redo the process. Uh, I've done this process now three times, and during those three times, only once did it fail, and uh, it went through the second time that that owner tried, so it shouldn't be a problem. I know there are some issues with AI not recognizing individuals of darker skin tone. Uh, I have not experienced that problem uh, with this particular process uh, at this point. So uh, if I do see of that or if you folks hear of it, please leave a comment. Let me know. 
Uh, that way we try to get that feedback back to truck stop. Um, but I know in the early days of AI, uh, it was having a hard time recognizing those with darker skin. Uh, this system seems to be correcting that fairly well. So that is the uh, brief down and dirty about the uh, RMIS uh, setup that everyone is doing these days. Uh, again, this is a very quick down and dirty for everybody. It's, it's a good process once it flows, but it also means that there is an additional step when you're doing an RMIS setup that you're not typically used to. Okay. Uh, so when you go to actually run an RMIS setup and dispatchers, you know what I'm talking about here. Uh, before you had a single verification where your owner was emailed a code. Well, that's still going to happen. But before that, when you first go ahead and you put in the carrier's MC number, you complete the pre-qualification screen, it's going to redirect you into the authenticator process. Since you've already set up the authenticator, you're going to say that you don't register as a new user again. Just go ahead and put in your password and username for that carrier. And then it's going to request, again, I do the SMS portion. So for me, it requests the owner's phone number. I put in the owner's phone number. The owner then gets a text from Truck Stop for the MFA verification code. I plug that in. I get my blue check mark. And once I get my blue check mark, it is supposed to redirect you back into RMIS to complete the setup. And at that point is when you put in the carrier's RMIS ID number, their zip code, and then it's going to email your carrier the second verification code so now you have two verification codes you have to obtain uh one is going to be typically by text or by authenticator and the second one is going to be by email like we're already used to once you do these please 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 after you complete the setup make sure you delete your cookies i was experiencing an issue where when i ran the authenticator and i got the blue check mark it would not advance me back into RMIS. It kind of got hung up. So if you experience that, close your browser, delete your cookies, and then go back into the setup process again. So basically what that tells me is that every time you do this process, you need to go ahead and reset your cookies so that the next time you go into it, you shouldn't experience a delay or reset your cookies before you start your next uh, RMIS setup. But whichever one, it doesn't matter. But we're, you're going to find out that this is a pain in the tail. It takes a couple extra minutes to do. But once you have it set up, it should only take about another 30 seconds into completing an RMIS setup. And we're going to get used to this fairly quick. It's going to be all right. It's really not that hard. You know, but please do your best. Get it done. The sooner you get it done, the easier your life is going to be. And uh, pay attention to how you're getting things done. It is for a good cause. It does support fraud prevention and it keeps people's information safe. With that being said, yay, it's a short one, under 15 minutes. If you ever need help, remember, don't let scammers take you and your cargo for a ride. Contact Double Broker Bounty Hunter. That's me at dbbh.hotline at vigilanttransport.com and I'm there to help you anytime you need. You can also hit us up on our Facebook group, which is scrolling on the bottom of the screen, and we'll be able to help answer any of your questions pertaining to anything regarding fraud prevention. Thank you very much. Take care now.